Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors, including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. Now we do our best each week to bring you tasteful content, but viewer discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This week, we begin with a field trip through Prime Hook National Wildlife Refuge for October Fest. We stop by the Purdue Corporate Office in Salisbury to get a lesson in oyster cage making. Scorchy Taws takes us to a rather unique auction house in Parksley, Virginia. And we celebrate 100 years of chicken farming on the peninsula at the Delmarva Chicken Festival. Outdoors Delmarva starts right now. Welcome to Outdoors Delmarva, the show that celebrates our communities, our cultures and traditions, and the places we call home. My name is Jason Lee. And I'm Lauren Hitch. Jason, I wanted to congratulate you and our videographer Freeman on your one year work anniversary on Outdoors Delmarva. Well, thank you so very much. Um, did you happen to get us a present? I did. It's me. Um, <laughs> did you happen to keep the receipt? This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. And now, here's Jason Lee and Lauren Hitch. Prime Hook National Wildlife Refuge is one of our favorite places to visit. And that's even more so the case when we get to hang out with Delmarva Birding Weekends during their annual October Fest. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to, uh, I guess this is at the second day for us on the Delmarva Birding Weekend here in October. We are here at Prime Hook National Wildlife Refuge. My name is Anthony Gonzen uh, with my co-leader here, Chris Bennett. We've been running a number of trips for Delmarva Birding Weekends for quite a few years now. And we're hopeful we're gonna see lots of great stuff this morning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down the boardwalk trail here, and then the boardwalk trail will bring us out a little bit farther down onto the dike trail, which is the trail that goes through here around the, around the gate. This time of year, this is, we're at the, um, the first week of October uh, is the, typically the, the, the greatest diversity of migrating raptors. It's a time of year where you can see pretty much everything that migrates through Delaware. When they created this wildlife refuge, they put tide gates in both of those creeks, one at Fowler Beach Road and one at Broadkill Road, so that they didn't let the tides come in anymore and they converted all of this to a freshwater system. The only birds that really aren't federally protected are birds that would be considered non-migratory. So here in Delaware, that would be um, your bobwhite quail, uh, turkeys, wild turkeys, um, any kind of like ground bird like that. Uh, but almost every species of bird is protected at some level. There's not many that are not protected, to put it that way. I learn something new every time I go out with Delmarva Birding Weekends. And if you'd like to start learning something new, go online to delmarvabirding.com and check out some of the cool events they've got coming up. Still to come on the show, we meet an auctioneer from Parksley, Virginia in this week's Remembering Scorchy Talls. But up next, we head back to Salisbury for some oyster cage construction. Outdoors Delmarva presented by Gateway Subaru returns right after these messages. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. If you're anything like me, you often wonder how things are made. And some of those things might be things that you never even really thought about, such as the case with oyster cages. So I guess it's a good thing the folks from Purdue had an oyster cage making party at their corporate office in Salisbury. <laughs> Today we're doing a cage building event with the Oyster Recovery Partnership. Um, it's a group that we've worked with for 14 years now. Um, so we're excited to, to bring this event to our associates here at Purdue. Um, over the last 14 years, we've uh, bagged about 10,000 bags of shells um, and built about 200 cages. So we're hoping to add to that total this afternoon. We're obviously, you know, being part of the Chesapeake Bay region, we're concerned about the health of the Chesapeake Bay. This is a good way to uh, 
to help the oyster population, help with the filtering that goes on with oysters naturally, and, and just give back to our community. Our normal job is collecting shells, but we're out here building oyster cages, and we use the uh, recycled shells to put in the cages, get oyster larvae to attach to those shells, and then they're given to waterfront property owners to oyster garden, essentially. Oyster shells are essential for growing oysters in Chesapeake Bay, um, both for restoration and from a commercial aspect. So uh, every shell we can get, all, all the better. Those trucks over there, they go to restaurants all across Maryland, Virginia, Pennsylvania, um, even DC, and some even Delaware. Um, but also we get a lot from shucking houses, um, both from this area and even uh, Virginia and beyond. Yeah, so the first thing is they gotta dry out. As you can imagine, it's pretty warm today. They're highly perishable, so you gotta let them, just let nature do the thing, decompose all the tissue, let them dry out. And then um, they actually introduce oyster larvae to those oyster shells in a tank, um, and that's at University of Maryland's Horn Point Oyster Hatchery. Those little larval oysters stick to the shells and create what's spat on shell. Spat's a baby oyster, and then those are planted back in the water, or in our case, they'll go in cages that we'll build today, and those will go to waterfront property owners um, and other organizations on the water to more of an educational program to help foster uh, you know, those young oysters. So one of the coolest things is every oyster that you eat, that's two half shells, up to 10 uh, little spat baby oysters can grow per recycled half shell. So that's a 20-fold return from eating one oyster and recycling both shells. I was raised on the shore and just being around the water and having the access to water for sports and you know having fun outdoors and recreation and then getting food from it growing up um, that's always been something important to me to keep our areas wild and beautiful um, but it's also important you know throughout your life I think participate in these things that affect you directly, um, whether you're eating the food or not, but their uh, oysters are a huge part of the ecosystem. So um, yeah, I just think it's super important that we get the chance to do this and then, um, you know, actually participate in it and make an effect on our community and our waterways. Yeah. Um, the first thing is shell recycling, uh, oysterrecovery.org. We have a list of close to 300 restaurants and public drop sites. I think the county here has, I think, at least eight. Um, just at transfer stations, you can leave any of your shells there. Um, but yeah, at dine at restaurants that you see have an oyster or oyster shell recycling logo. And uh, if you get dine at home, try to find some place to recycle those shells. Despite the overall numbers of the oysters in the Chesapeake Bay being up as of June of this year, there are still some areas, especially along the eastern shore, that are seeing some dangerous over-harvesting numbers. So the efforts of the Shell Recycling Alliance is really important. Find out how you can help by going to oysterrecovery.org. Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru, returns right after these messages. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru, higher standards. Sponsored by Shorts Marine, everything but the water, and Bell Creek Equipment. For farm, home, or fun, Bell Creek is number one. Lauren, this week's Remembering Scorchy Taws reminds me a lot of you whenever you get excited. Hmm, how so? Well, you start to speak really fast and I can only understand about every fifth word. Jason may or may not be back for the rest of the show. Honoring the life and legacy of Scorchy Taws. Thanks to Shorts Marine in Long Neck, Delaware. Shorts Marine, everything but the water. If, there, if you have merchandise to turn, it's the quickest way of turning your money. If it's produced right, advertised right, I think you can beat any other method of sale. O.W. Otho Mears of Parksley, Virginia has been an auctioneer for 30 years. I'm totally wrapped up in it. I never plan to retire. Uh, I plan to slow down. 
We visited with O.W. at his barnyard auction house on a day when his gavel was silent. He was between auctions. We don't have an auction until we feel like we have enough merchandise to make a good presentable sale and enough items in a variety that it will draw a variety of people. O.W. Mears barnyard auctions do draw a variety of people and if there's some among them that aren't in the bidding mood, they can lose themselves in the realm of taxidermy antiquity that surrounds the bidding area. A collection handed down from O.W.'s grandfather dating back to the late 1800s. You might call his sales auctions with a unique atmosphere. Atmosphere augmented by O.W.'s own collection of antiquated advertising signs. We get many comments along the line of, well, I've not only had fun buying, I've had fun looking. The public's been mighty good to us, and we've tried to repay that by giving them a little something more than just an auction to come to. More than an auction even includes a personable rooster who readily accepts peanuts from the youngsters. Yes, you can truthfully say that there's never a dull moment at O.W. Mears' barnyard house auctions. Scorchy Taw is wandering our Del Marvelous land for WBOC News. Remembering Scorchy Taws is presented by Shorts Marine, online at shortsmarine.com. Did you know that 95% of all broiler chickens raised in the U.S. are done so on family farms? Did you know that the United States is the second leading broiler chicken exporter to the world? Brazil holds the number one spot. And did you know that in 2022, Delmarva Chicken Farms raised 596 million birds, producing nearly 5.5 billion pounds of chicken with an estimated wholesale value of $5 billion? Now you do. Did You Know is sponsored by North Bay Marina. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. You're watching Outdoors Del Marva presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. The Del Marva Chicken Association is celebrating 75 years in business, but through a party that was 100 years in the making. That's almost as old as Jason. Isn't she just so cute? This industry, this region, frankly, this region, I'll start there, runs on chicken. And what I mean by that is all of the jobs, all of the grain that gets purchased and processed and sent to become chicken feed, events like this, the high paying jobs, the community that this industry builds, that's what this industry is about. We see industries all across the state doing really interesting things, but nothing, nothing like the poultry industry, like the chicken industry, and the economic value, the, the chicken GDP that this industry brings to the shore. It's unbelievable, it's remarkable. I talk about it whenever I'm in other parts of the state. I talk about it like I was just out of state seeing the, the uh, Secretary of Agriculture in Wisconsin. He wanted to know, you know, what's, what's big in Maryland? It's chicken. So, to the Delmarva Chicken Association on the 7th day of October in recognition of 100 years of the chicken industry on Delmarva and the 75th anniversary of the Delmarva Chicken Association, your work is vital, what you do is incredible. Congratulations and thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to represent a large part of the Delmarva Peninsula and to, and to sit on the Ag and to chair the Agriculture Appropriations Subcommittee in Washington, which has a lot to do with the industry. Anyway, I, do, I want to be brief. I just want to present a flag flown over the Capitol, Holly, to the association. Along with music from the Jones Boys and Mike Hines in the Look, our good buddy Jimmy Charles was on hand to provide some live entertainment. But bands weren't the only forms of live entertainment that day, as there was the Miss Delmarva Chicken Festival pageant with multiple categories, and a hot wing eating contest for speed and heat. And as I'll never turn down free hot wings, I can tell you that the hottest of the hot that I was given lived up to the hype, and my lips are tingling just thinking about them. But they sure were tasty. 
a couple years ago, some of you guys were kind enough to let a whole group of uh, lawmakers from the Western Shore come over, and it was their first time at a poultry house. And you know what they said afterwards? That, and it was in August. They, they suited up, they went into the poultry house, and the first comment was, it's cooler in the poultry house than it is outside. They never would have known that had you not invited us in and had you not shown how you care for the chickens. When they're hungry, they eat. When they're thirsty, they drink. That it's not crowded. So we appreciate those invitations and we'll continue to take you up. But, but we also want to recognize from the heart, the hardworking farm families, the growers, those who are working in every aspect of the poultry industry. You are heart and soul for us. It's why we go back and we fight to protect our way of life. I still don't know how Bobby got through all those hot wings. I know what you mean. I had two of them and my lips were still tingling three hours afterwards. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we're going to check out your latest photos. Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru, returns right after this. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. It's time to flip through the photo album and take a look at your latest pictures. Thanks to our friends at North Bay Marina. Kyle Brown of Laurel gets so excited for deer season that sometimes he finds himself all the way in Texas on a hunt. But make no mistake, you'll definitely see him at the Delaware Whitetail Open. Kyle's brother Cody is hoping for the kind of success this year like he had in 2022 as he shared a picture of this monster he harvested last November. Buddy Scott sent in a photo of the Maryland Avenue jetty in Rehoboth asking us if the face of the infamous sea witch that protects sunken treasure off the coast can actually be seen. We'll let you decide. And Jason, you went looking for birds last week, but the birds seemed to come to you? This hawk seemed to think my car was a great place to enjoy the afternoon sun. And I also wanted to share this photo with you of the evening sun from my vantage point at the Ocean City Inlet. Outdoors Delmarva viewer pictures are sponsored by North Bay Marina. Now it's time to take a look at the Mount of the Week. Brought to us by Longhorn Butcher and Taxidermy in Pittsville. This impressive buck was harvested in Somerset County by Brian Smith. And if there was any doubt as to why it's called Longhorn Butcher and Taxidermy, these pictures should clear that up. For all your butcher and taxidermy needs, contact Spencer at 410-422-3942 or stop by the Morris Road location in Pittsville. For some of you, it may be too early to be thinking about Christmas shopping, but it's never too early for those in need. Which is why we are inviting you to participate in the inaugural Outdoors Delmarva Camp Out for Kids Toy Drive to benefit the United States Marine Corps Reserve's Toys for Tots program. The toy drive will be taking place on October 21st and 22nd at Trapon State Park and will be set up right next to the camp store. All we ask is that you bring a new unwrapped toy and we've been told that if you don't have a toy, you can always grab something at the camp store. For more information, you can go to OutdoorsDelmarva.com or you can check out the event on our Facebook page. The Outdoors Delmarva Camp Out for Kids Toy Drive is coming your way October 21st and 22nd at Trap Pond State Park. That's going to do it for us this week. Thank you so much for watching and keep sending in those photos by emailing outdoors at WBOC.com. If you'd like to follow us online, scan that QR code in the bottom right corner of your screen with your phone's camera. We hope to see you out there at Trap Pond State Park next weekend for the Outdoors Del Marva Camp Out for Kids Toy Drive to benefit the Toys for Tots program. But until then, my name is Jason Lee. And I'm Lauren Hitch, and we hope to see you Outdoors, Outdoors Del Marva. Outdoors Del Marva, a Draper Media production, is presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Shorts Marine and Bell Creek Equipment.